up guys? So today, I'm gonna be going over our inshore setup, starting with our tackle and our rods and our reels for what we use to catch snook inshore. And the next couple days, we're gonna be doing some snook fishing in Stewart, and I'm going to be participating in the Rocky Barra Bounty, which is in Queensland, Australia, and it's a big tournament, a big event that occurs every year. The dates are from October 21st to October 23rd, and they fish for Barra Mundi in Australia. We're gonna be playing along here in Florida, and we're gonna be catching some snook and being part of the tournament and the tournament is basically to promote conservation it's a catch and release effort to find out how their fishery is doing and how healthy their fish are so every fish that they catch they take a picture of it they measure it and they put it into the app for the Rocky Bear Bounty and it's an excellent program to be a part of and we're excited to be fishing it too before we get into the specifics of what we use to catch snook I just have a little side note for you guys I want to let you know that I officially have a PO box so I'm officially setting up fan mail. You guys can send me whatever you feel like, whether it's a letter to me or a picture or even like a lure, anything you want to send, send it over. We're going to be doing mail time coming up in the near, near future. So I'm excited for that. I finally have a PO box. So go ahead and send me fan mail. First thing I'm, we're going to tell you about is our boat. This is a 2000 low roughneck, 17 foot long. Uh, and you guys ask about it quite a bit so we can give you the details. Uh, it came out that gray color, we painted it white. Now this is obviously a used boat, uh, but it you know, really has a lot of nice features in it. Uh, starting from the beginning, we have our, our trolling motor. I don't know what trolling motor this is, it's a min, uh, Minnecota or whatever. It's ancient, I ran it into a dock. Darcy put some tape on here to hold it together. The best part about the boat is the Sea Deck. You can see Sea Deck, our first sponsor, one of our best sponsors, we love Sea Deck. Uh, they're a great supporter of Darcy's Offshore. They Sea Deck our whole boat. We got the Sea Deck logo in here, Dar Sizzle Inshore, uh, and all kinds of great stuff. It's great on your feet. It, I always get the question if it cleans up. It cleans up great, just like any other surface on your boat. Now to the engine. It's an old engine. It's like a 2000 70 horsepower Yamaha two stroke. It's loud as heck, a lot louder than our four stroke. We weren't really used to that. But this is supposed to be one of the most reliable engines uh, you can get, and it starts up all the time. We really like it, and, so it's, and it's perfect for this little boat. Down here, I want to show you a couple of things. Uh, peculiar to a 17-foot aluminum boat, we got trim tabs. I never use them because I just tilt the motor up and down, but they but they work great. That's awesome. Uh, we got a jack plate. It's a mat. We got a jack plate. It's a manual jack plate. I don't really use that either, but it's nice to have. And also, you can see the pump down here. We got a live well. We got two live wells. They're kind of small, but we got two of them, and that's real great for us too. Rod holders. You got to have rod holders on your fishing boat. We got two sets on each side. One came with the boat, and the other one we added ourselves. One just goes straight up. And this other one here tilts out, so we control four lines like Darcy likes to do, uh, trolling for snook sometimes, and just keep our rods there. So that's really great. All right, here in the cockpit, we got plenty of room. Uh, you can see it says Sea Deck here. We got some rod holders. We got some LED lights. We got a great little depth finder from Lowrance. Really works out pretty well, actually. We got these real comfy chairs, which I wasn't sure I was going to like, but I, I love them. And really, the main thing I like about the boat is, you know, it's a nice, cheap, and very light boat, and easy to trailer. You know, we have the other boat. It's a 23-foot pro line. We keep it down in the marina. We go offshore with it. And so we wanted something, you know, real mobile. And you know, I got no problems towing it with my with my F-150. Flies around and it weighs nothing, and it goes in real shallow water. So, you know, two thumbs up. And we also use it a lot for bass fishing. You know, it goes under all the little low bridges we have in our canals. And so, uh, it's a great little boat for us, and we love it. Now I'm going to get into the specifics of the combos that we use when we go snook fishing. And you actually have seen these combos a lot in my past videos. I use these combos for both inshore saltwater fishing as well as freshwater fishing for bass. I love them. And starting with my rod, the rods that we like to use are the Tsunami Coastal Series Airwave Rods. And they're really an awesome rod. We've had been using them for about a year and a half now. We absolutely love them. We, it has a lot of backbone. It also bends over so you have a really fun fight with whatever fish you're catching. And um, it's just an overall great rod, really affordable price point. So for those of you that are looking for an affordable rod, I would highly recommend checking out Tsunami Rods. And then um, with my reel, I've said this a bunch of times, this is an Accurant SR6 spinning reel. I just recently got a brand new silver one from Accurant. Gorgeous, love it. And um, we also have it spooled with 30 pound braid as our main line. And we are now sponsored by Tough Line and they make amazing braid. I believe this is the, eight, the Domino 8 braid. All right, so now I'm gonna go on to move on to my other combos that we like to use. And I know the Accurant SR6 has a little bit higher of a price point. So 
for you, those of you that are looking for an affordable reel, I would highly recommend checking out Finor's Lethal 40 Spinning Reel. I believe this reel is at a price point at or under $100. So that's actually a really good affordable price. We're actually really happy with the Finor's. I like them a lot. Smooth drag, awesome reel. And um, for this rod, it's actually a little bit of a heavier setup. This is also a Tsunami. This is a 7-foot Tsunami Airwave Elite Series. And you would use this more when you're fishing around docks and structure so you can bring those fish out of the heavy structure and not lose them. And this has a really good backbone. This is an awesome rod. I like this one a lot too. And um, this is also spooled with 30-pound Tough Line Domin 8 braid. I'm going to go over the actual terminal tackle now, guys. We're going to be mainly live baiting. That's what we do in, in a steward fishery right now, especially since, since it's the, uh, <laughs> the mullet run. We're going to do a lot of live baiting. So first thing to talk about, Darcy already mentioned it. We had 30-pound uh, and 20-pound Dominate Tough Line Braid as a main line, and then we're going to use fluorocarbon leaders. Now, the, how heavy you want the leader to be is, is really personal preference and, and kind of what, uh, what you're doing. I like to start at 30-pound fluorocarbon. Now, I know that might be a little light for some of you snook fishermen, but you know you can't catch a fish unless, unless you get a bite and I'm always trying to shoot for that bite first that's where I lean so I'm gonna start with 30 you know if it's dirty water you can go up to 40 you can go up to 50 and 60 even you know around docks and at night and, and this kind of stuff uh, so that's what we're gonna do with that and we're gonna be doing this bird is making a ton of noise can you guys hear that uh, we're gonna do some bobber fishing so we're gonna put bobbers on there um, like one of these split bobbers and then a hook below it and also we're gonna be uh, doing some free line uh, with, the, with the baits and also we're going to be doing put some little weights on the on them and, and keeping the mullets down low b below the schools and on the bottom so you know we're going to fish the whole water column depending on what's going on uh, and hooks of course we're going to use all circle hooks for snook because you know all these fish we're going to probably release I don't think we're going to catch keep any um, maybe we'll keep a slot I doubt it but circle hooks you're going to have the circle hook is going to match your bait size so we're, we're always using mustad uh, circle hooks, we're going to probably bring 3-0's, 4-0's, 5-0's and 6-0's depending on how big the mullet or the pilchards we get tomorrow. And then we're going to hook those you know, right through the nose, uh, sometimes through the tail depending on how we want them to swim. You hook them through the nose uh, and they're going to swim on top and sometimes you can troll them like that. If you want to hook them through the tail, they're going to generally swim down. And we have a video on that and we'll probably also go over that a little bit more in the, uh, in the, in the videos while we're fishing for the next three days. So we've got three days of fishing videos coming up. you got to be excited. Uh, the next question, I know you guys are going to ask about lures. Again, we're not going to be doing a lot of lures, but I'm going to show you Darcy's favorite lures. Her most favorite lure that you've seen a hundred times is the Azuri Minnow. You can see this lure is beat up to heck. She's had to change the hook two or three times. She trolls this, she throws this, she catches a ton of snook. I got videos on it. Next thing we like to use is these uh, paddle tails. This is a gambler paddle tail and ghost shad. I'd probably throw this one first, but you know, Go through all the different colors until you got your fish. You got to keep changing those colors and see what they're biting on that day. Typically, darker colors and darker water and darker light conditions and lighter colors, you know, the opposite when it's cleaner water and in the middle of the day. Uh, jigs. This little teeny baby jig, you're going to throw this at night under those dock lights. If you look under those dock lights, you're not going to see any big old mullet swimming around, typically like this. You're going to see little glass minnows. So this one's even a little big. So you want to try these little teeny ones. Other folks love to throw these uh, big bucktails um, and, and flare hawks and catch a ton of fish. I haven't done that well on them that yet. Um, I haven't used these ones yet, so maybe we'll change my luck. Uh, these hookup lures that we uh, just got from Gambler are associated with hookup. And so, but these are the common lures that we would use for lures. And, uh, and that's that. I hope you guys were able to learn something from this video. We just did a little short video today. I've got school tonight at FAU. And then um, tomorrow we're going to be fishing in Stewart pre-fishing for the Rocky Barra Bounty. So uh, stay tuned for that. we got a lot of fishing coming up the next three days. So should catch a lot of fish and have a great time on the water. So be sure to subscribe to my channel. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Also, make sure, for, don't forget, I have a P.O. box now. All that information is in the description below, as well as the specifics on the combos and the tackle that we're using. So check that out. And until my next adventure, follow your dream and keep on catching. Low rough ride. Low rider. <laughs> Let's do it again. Rough.